So whenever I think of a hot hatch, vehicles like the Volkswagen GTI, Ford Focus ST, and Honda Civic Type R quickly come to mind. However, today I'm just outside of beautiful Keystone, Colorado, testing out a hot hatch that I kind of forgot about. This is the latest 2018 Mini Cooper Clubman John Cooper Works. So with nearly 230 horsepower and all-wheel drive, does this have what it takes to compete with the heavy hitters? That's what we're here to find out. So those of you who are a little bit unfamiliar with the Mini lineup, let me try to break it down for you in a simple term. Everything is basically called the Mini Cooper, and then the third name kind of shows where it falls into the lineup. The Clubman is kind of like an extended wheelbase, extended length version of the Mini Cooper, which is now available, the standard hatch in a two or four door version. Now, you may notice there's some Harman Kardon badges or Oh, decals all over this car. That's because I'm out here with Harman Kardon for the Mini Takes the States event, the 2018 event where 5,000 Mini owners travel the country and meet in the middle. Now, let's talk a little bit about the um, Mini Cooper Clubman. This is now in its second generation. The first generation ran from like 2008 to 2014. This was introduced back in 2016 and it incorporates all the current Mini design language here. You've got the company's oval bug eye headlights, which are full LEDs. Although the turn signal is not LED, you have an LED running light, low and high beams. The John Cooper work has its own unique front fascia which removes the fog lights to give you a little bit more air intake scoops and a little bit more aggressive front fascia along with the red trim. It's definitely a very attractive iconic look. This car definitely turns a lot of heads. Uh, the S models and the John Cooper will have a functional intercooler or hood scoop here to cool the intercooler which is necessary, necessary because this is a turbocharged uh, engine. Now if you guys are a little unfamiliar with the John Cooper name uh, this guy was the original tuner of the original Mini back in the 50s. Uh, his son Michael Cooper uh, incorporated the company in 2000 and then Mini, uh, or the, the company was bought out by BMW and Mini back, back in 2007 where it was made a part of the brand. Now this car may not look big but it's actually a huge car by Mini standards. Um, compared to the previous generation its wheelbase has been stretched by five inches and it's about a foot longer. Um, this car is roughly about three inches wider as well than the standard Cooper hatch to give this a more planted stance. Mini's goal with this car was to make it a little bit more comfortable, a little bit more spacious. Now the John Cooper works version comes with these 18 inch wheels with a kind of a black machine finish. They look great. They're wrapped in uh, summer tires. And then for 2016, when this car came out, or 2017, I'm sorry, the John Cooper Works are all all-wheel drive. Um, you can get an S model with front-wheel drive, uh, which I was able to show you guys a video of as well. Make sure you click on the link in the description to check that one out. But I mean, overall, uh, the all-wheel drive function is definitely gives us a little bit of a unique touch uh, as vehicles like the GTI, uh, the Civic Type R and the Ford Focus ST are all front wheel drive. Now, like every other Mini, you can kind of contrast the roof. This one has a black roof with a panoramic sunroof. You can also get like a white roof or a red roof if you guys would like to do so. Uh, but coming around the rear of the car, a lot of traditional Clubman styling cues are here. You have the split barn, your, or barn, door, or barn door style doors where it splits out in the middle. And then you have a new rear taillight here, which surprisingly, the taillights are kind of an incandescent LED combination. These are kind of an LED accents, but these actually aren't the brake lights. The brake lights are down. Brake lights are down here in the bumper, and then these are the turn signals along with the actual taillight assembly. The John Cooper Works give you gives you its own unique exhaust, which does have a little bit meaner sound. Now, the cargo area of this car was also expanded because this is the uh, Clubman. It's uh, it's about 17 and a half cubic feet of space with the seats up. If you fold them down, Mini says you get around 47 cubic feet, which is actually comparable to what you get in like a Honda Civic uh, hatchback, although not with the actual seats up. Underneath here, you do have some under seat floor. Uh, storage right there, uh, but no spare tire. You can add that as a dealer accessory for about a hundred bucks. 
So because the John Cooper Works version is at the top of the trim lines, this vehicle does come standard with the company's smart key access system with push button start. You can see here is the current mini key fob. It's definitely a unique key. If you guys don't have the smart entry, you have to stick the key fob in the dash to actually turn the vehicle on. No remote start on the key fob, but you may be able to access that through the mini connect app system. Now, as you approach the door handle, you're gonna notice there is a button on the outside. Just touch the button here, it locks the doors. It'll beep um, as well. Uh, to unlock it, there's no sensor on the back of the handle. You have to touch the button again that unlocks the door for you. Now, as you can see from the interior, the John Cooper Works version definitely has its own unique pair of seats, its own unique style to the interior. The steering wheel is different from the S that I also showed you guys. Love the red stitching. I find the seats to be more comfortable than what I found in the S seats, which I definitely thought was a huge plus. So make sure you guys try the seats out. These just hold you in place. I actually like the cloth seats that this car gives you. They're grippy, they hold you well, um, and you can also get a heated cloth seat. No cooled seats though. Mini doesn't offer cooled seats on any of their vehicles. So that's definitely an interesting omission, especially at this price. You have manual seat adjustments here, which is kind of a negative as opposed to the uh, power seats that I had in the S. Uh, the uh, Clubman version, I don't believe, gives you the power seats, but you'll, I'll have to double check that for 2019. Now stepping inside, you can see here the seating is definitely um, low. It actually, feels a tad lower, I wanna say, than the S. Um, this, of course, has its own unique suspension tuning to kind of make it a little bit more sportier. And then when you shut the door, um, it surprisingly didn't sound as solid as the S model that I tested uh, the other day. Now, starting the vehicle up, just like all the other vehicles with push button start, just put your foot on the brake. It's technically not a push button in this car, it's a toggle, it's right here in the middle, just put, push this down. And that starts the vehicle up for you. And as you can see, I'll flip it, I'll flip it to sport mode here. Uh, the exhaust note gets a little bit louder. This version definitely has a much more aggressive, deep sound to the exhaust. So I, I like that immediately as soon as I get into this interior. Now looking at the rest of the design, you can see a lot of the current mini design themes, or at least the past mini design themes. There's lots of circles in this interior, a circle here, a circle there. I mean, that's kind of what minis have always had in the past, uh, but I'm glad to see that mini has kind of worked to make this interior a little bit more ergonomically useful. Uh, and easier in your day-to-day -day life. Now, regarding the materials in this car, you can see the dash is a soft touch material here on the upper portion, although I'm surprised it's not like a stitched portion. I like this kind of textured aluminum look trim here, going with the piano black plastic and some of the chrome in here. There's an LED light here that kind of adjusts based on whether you're turning a knob, which is a pretty cool, pretty cool thing. Uh, that's what Mini also includes in the S model that I showed you guys uh, before. Uh, the door panel here is also soft touch, although it's not as soft as I'd like it to be. There's a chrome door handle here with the button kind of integrated into this handle to lock and unlock it. It's slightly padded down here with more of that sport text fabric seats. The windows are one touch express up down for all four. And then you can see there's also a power folding mirror option that this particular one gives you. Uh, this one also being a top trim gives you the 12 speaker Harman Kardon sound system, which sounds just as good as what you get in the S. It's tef definitely worth it. Many used to offer it as a la carte for like $850. I would definitely go for it if you guys are an audiophile. The head up display is also included with the premium package. It's the same flip up glass that I showed you in the S. It shows you your information there. Very useful but I wish Mini was projecting it into the actual um, windscreen or windshield as opposed to a little separate piece. The John Cooper Works version has its own unique set of gauges. Um, it's kind of a red accent. You have the checkered flag theme there. You have your fuel gauge there. If you push this BC button over here, you can adjust between your different settings, your trip, fuel economy, instantaneous gas mileage, your average speed, and then your actual digital speedometer. The steering wheel, I like the steering wheel. It's nice and fat, uh, has nice contrasting stitching. You have paddle shifters uh, for the eight-speed automatic transmission, which the S model didn't have. It's optional on that. You have a John Cooper Works badge here. Uh, it's electric power steering assist. We'll go into the test drive later on. Now let's talk a little bit about the head unit here. When you first put the vehicle into reverse, you can see it's got a BMW quality uh, reverse camera, which is great. You also have front and rear parking sensors, which is great as well. Um, if you guys need you know, the assistance when you're parking. This is the upgraded 8.8 inch uh, head unit, which is technically a version of BMW's iDrive. You can see here, as opposed to the previous generation car, which had like a little tiny chrome stick that kind of toggled around, they've given you basically the iDrive function with the touchpad here, where you can write on this, or you can also use this as a touchscreen which is just like the iDrive. This is the home screen here, all your different sources. Uh, you can see there's media, communication for your phone, notification, mini connected, my mini for your accessing your settings, and then navigation. Let's go to the navigation map display here. You can see this is the uh, mini navigation head unit map. It's very similar to what you get in BMW's iDrive, kind of dumbed down a little bit in terms of its graphics, but it still looks pretty impressive. It works like a tablet where you can pinch and you can zoom if you don't want to use the actual controller. You have actual radio preset buttons here. Your volume knob is right here. No tuning knob, you have to use these little buttons here. 
I'm annoyed that this kind of doesn't stay upright, kind of like a Volkswagen. It's something you have to kind of get used to. Um, but I mean, overall, the system works pretty well. You do have features like Apple CarPlay in this car, which is optional, um, but it's nice that Mini includes that. Uh, you have a USB port down here where you have to plug in your phone. No wireless CarPlay like what you get in the BMW products. But overall, the head unit, I kind of wish that it was a little bigger. Surprisingly, at 8.8 inches, it looks small because it's in this big circular bezel. Uh, I know it's a mini design theme, but I kind of just wish Mini would get rid of it and give us a, like a tablet style screen that sticks up, which is kind of where everyone's going. Now down here, dual zone climate control, which is nice. Um, you have your toggle switches here for your auto start stop, your parking sensors, your sport mode is right here, or your drive mode is here. It goes between a mid, a normal, a green setting, or you can also go up to the sport setting where everything kind of gets sharpened up. Uh, your engine start stop button is there, your heated seat button is here. Of course, you have three level heated seats, no cooled seats. A little bit more storage down here. Uh, you have two cup holders. This controls the eight speed automatic. It's a traditional shifter, very easy to use. If you guys go for the manual, the area here doesn't change. It literally just changes the actual shift knob here and gives you the six speed pattern. Over here, you can see electronic parking brake, your iDrive controller over here, although the buttons don't feel quite as high quality as what you get in a BMW. I wish this was a little bit softer. It's like a leatherette Sensatec material. You have a wireless charging that this one gives you where it fits your phone very nicely, but there's also two levels of storage. There's another USB port in there that allows you to charge. Above you, there is a Pano sunroof, as you can see. Um, it lets in a lot of light. It only opens up over the front, but what I really like about this car is you can open this up and then you can close this to kind of you know shade you a little bit from the sun if it's a little bit too intense. Love the seats in this car with the suede and the sport techs. It just feels really good, comfortable. You can also adjust the thigh extender here if you guys like. And then the glove compartment, it's a pretty decent size. Um, it's a lot lined with felt, but the door itself is damped. But I mean, overall, the interior of this car, definitely I love the John Cooper Works touches. It feels pretty roomy in here with good visibility, great tech. Um, and if you guys like the quirky design of Mini, you're definitely gonna like a lot with this interior. So the purpose of a hot hatch is being able to use it uh, to carry your friends occasionally when you need to actually use the back seat. And thankfully, the uh, Mini Cooper Clubman definitely gives you a usable back seat. Uh, compared to the standard Mini, this car is a five inch stretch in the wheelbase, so you do see more legroom in here. And then with the sunroof here that gives you a little bit more light, it definitely brightens up the cabin. I'm five foot seven. Um, there's pretty good foot space. There's a pretty good amount of legroom. Uh, there's a pretty good amount of storage in here. You have two um, map pockets here. Mini gives you some rear seat vents. And then you have a nice little armrest here that folds down to give you some uh, cup holders here. Now, a couple things I'm not notice are missing that are, I'm noticing that are missing. No heated rear seats, uh, but that was kind of expected. Although at this price point, I kind of expected me to include that. But overall, the back seat is definitely uh, useful. So under the hood of the John Cooper Works Club, and you're going to find the hottest version of the two-liter twin-powered turbocharged four-cylinder with direct injection. This motor is a BMW engine. It's the same engine that you'll find in the BMW X1 and the X2, and it makes the same output as the BMW motors: 228 horsepower and 258 pounds feet of torque. Now, if you're keeping score, this is a 20 horsepower boost over the old John Cooper works and like nearly 60 pound feet of torque. So these are significant improvements. And it's also a nice healthy bump over the 189 horsepower that I showed you guys in the S version. Now, this particular one only comes with all wheel drive, which is great. It does make this car heavier. It weighs around 3,500 pounds. You can take your pick between a six speed manual or the eight speed automatic transmission that my tester has. And then with the fuel economy, it's actually a little bit better with the automatic rated at 23 in the city, 31 on the highway, 26, 26 combined, make sure you put premium. It actually gets pretty much the same gas mileage as the S. So let's get out on the road and see how it all performs, shall we? So when I drove the Mini Cooper Clubman S, I'll admit I was a little disappointed with the acceleration of that car. However, the John Cooper Works version is the performance one designed for enthusiasts. And with an extra like 40 horsepower over the S, let's see if uh, that 40 horsepower really makes a difference. testing this car in Colorado and arguably this is up in the mountains the air is thinner here however because this is a turbocharged car it really shouldn't affect it that much now mini says this car will get to 60 in just around six seconds maybe 5.9 seconds it definitely feels considerably quicker and I like the sound the exhaust note the engine noise that's synthesized for this car definitely makes it sound a little bit more appropriate for this car I mean the JCW version uh, definitely gives you the added performance and the steering has been upgraded the suspension's been upgraded um, so everything about that you love about basically the clubman has kind of been elevated for this car now the base s model that i drove i i said that it was a little bit 
softer. It felt kind of a little bit harsh, or uh, it felt a little bit too soft. The steering wasn't as quick as I'd like. The suspension was a little soft. This version basically takes everything up to like 11. Uh, the suspension is definitely firmer. It has far less body lean. When you start turning the wheel on this car, which by the way, at electric power steering, Mini does a pretty good job with the feel and the quickness of it. You feel a little bit of the body lean. I mean, this car is big. Uh, it's a foot longer than the regular hatch. So you're gonna notice that it is uh, a lot heavier. Uh, when you start pushing it, but the JCW version definitely feels great, especially when you have it in a sports setting. So though I do wish this car had the uh, six-speed manual transmission, let's try another acceleration run with the automatic. I'm gonna turn the traction control off. I'm gonna brake torque it a little. Launch control active, it does have it. <laughs> pretty impressed. Um, it definitely has firmer shifts and then when you brake torque it and let it, the let the gas go or the brake go at around 2500 rpm it does have a little launch mode and then with all-wheel drive there's no drama it just kind of goes. Now it definitely doesn't have the you know the speed or ferocity of what you're gonna get in like a Subaru WRX STI or even the Volkswagen Golf R with the DSG transmission but it is pretty quick and it it is much better than what I tried out in the uh, regular S version. Now Let's try to put the transmit or the suspension back into its normal setting um, because this car does have adaptive dampers. Now I am noticing with the bigger 19 inch wheels on this car, um, the ride quality also suffers because of the stiffer suspension. Uh, even in its softer setting, this car definitely rides firmer. Now it's not quite as harsh as the minis that I drove from 10 years ago, but you are gonna notice that this is not as smooth and it's not quite as easy as a car to daily drive with the summer tires as well. This is a noisier car on this particular road surface out here. I found the road noise to be a little bit uh, deafening at times. Hmm. The uh, eight-speed automatic in this car also does a really good job with um, the gear changes. I mean, it has it shifts quick enough for me. It's not a dual clutch by any means, uh, but it does have those like crackles and pops when it, sh it upshifts, so that's really a great thing. The exhaust also makes a pretty decent amount of burbling noise when you have it in this sport setting here. And then when you're kind of just tootling along, whenever you put your foot down, it's pretty quick to drop a gear. And then when you put it back into its normal or comfort mode, it's also relatively good at staying quiet and smooth because this is a traditional torque converter automatic. But minis are always about the handling and this car really starts to shrink and remind you, or reminds you why minis are minis, basically, why they have such a cult following. The handling of this car is really good. I mean, the steering is electric, but it has great weight. The car doesn't have as much body lean as the S model. And you just feel like you can attack some corners in this car uh, a lot faster. And you don't really feel like you're going all that fast until you kind of look down at the speed and you're like going, oh crap, I'm definitely speeding in this car. But I mean, the seats, I find that to be comfortable. There's great visibility as well. Good view out of the front. Uh, view out of the side mirrors is great. Although the view out of the back from that split window is weird. You have, it takes a little bit to get used to it. Uh, this car does not have any of the driver assistance stuff, so no blind spot monitoring or rear cross traffic alert, just parking sensors and then the backup camera. Uh, you guys can option that in as a 1250 option if you guys want that. But I mean, overall, if you're gonna daily drive the JCW version, you're just gonna have to put up with the road, road noise as you can hear, the slightly firmer ride, which can be mitigated a bit when you guys put it into its normal setting. Unfortunately, the road noise doesn't go away. But I mean, overall, uh, as a competitor and as a hot hatch, this isn't really a hot hatch for me because it feels a little bit more special. It feels a little bit more, I guess, unique versus a hot hatch. It's got the premium feel of a Volkswagen Golf R, um, but it doesn't have that staleness of a Volkswagen as well. It feels a little bit more unique, uniquely British. I mean, that's what the, the Mini brand really delivers. So after spending the day with the John Cooper Works version of the Clubman, I've come to the conclusion that most people would probably not cross shop this with something like a Civic Type R, a Subaru, Subaru WRX STI, or a Ford Focus ST. That's because the Mini Cooper Clubman John Cooper Works is a little bit more of a premium feeling brand. As you guys saw, its interior definitely has a lot of unique style and quirks to it. It's got the performance that matches that of like a Volkswagen GTI or a Ford Focus ST, but it kind of gives you that all weather grip uh, and it wraps it in a style that definitely um, makes this vehicle stand out a lot more when you're comparing it to you know everything else on the road. Now, what I would compare it to favorably is probably a Volkswagen Golf R. Um, although the Volkswagen is definitely going to be quicker, it offers a similar level of premium feel that the Mini does. Although 
if you look at the actual character of this car, I like the way the Mini sounds. It's got a little bit more of an aggressive note and the handling of dynamics of this car is definitely a little bit more performance oriented than what you get in the Golf R. So if you guys are looking to actually purchase one of these, what's it gonna cost to put a John Cooper Works version of this car in your driveway? Well, Minis, as you guys know, are expensive and the John Cooper Works version is the top of the stack. This is the most expensive trim of any Mini product. And this car starts at $36,400 for the John Cooper Works Clubman. That's like roughly a $12,000 increase over a base Clubman with the base three cylinder turbo, but that's probably not the one you want. Now, this is a 2018 model, but because I don't have the window sticker on me, I'm gonna go off of 2019. Mini offers three different trim levels for 2019 since you can buy one of those now. There's signature, or there's classic, signature, and iconic. This one is kind of based off of the iconic trim, which starts at $44,900. Now, in terms of options, this one has the automatic transmission. Um, this car basically comes with the premium package, which gives you the LED headlights, the Harman Kardon sound, the head-up display. You can also get a driver assistance package that rolls in adaptive cruise. This one, as it sits, is around $45,000 which makes it a stupid amount of money and it's probably one of the reasons why enthusiasts don't look at these necessarily as a hot hatch. However, if you can kind of look past the price and you look at the overall premium experience, the style that the mini brand kind of offers you, it's definitely worth a look if you guys are looking for a vehicle like this. But I hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on this 2018 Mini Cooper Clubman John Cooper Works. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, make sure you follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews. Like us on Facebook. And as always, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll catch you all in the next video. It died. <laughs>